Take a look at this interesting conversation on Twitter the other day. Three time major champ Andy Murray talking about court speeds compared with the past said quote the biggest problem with today's conditions most weeks is the courts and balls are both super slow almost zero variety. Why not have some quick courts with slow balls or vice versa Andy Roddick what say you. Yeah I, I think this is right uh, you know it, it's it, I don't think that all uh, tournaments should feel kind of like a medium slow situation right I, I think we should have balls that are bouncing up and away higher bounce some weeks faster through the court I'm, I'm having fun watching turn because it is different than what we see most of the year there is a skill to playing low and kind of squirrely through the court and keeping your person uh, you know uh, at bay away from you so listen Andy Murray knows what makes interesting tennis uh, for sure. I, I like this. I think there should be certain parts of the year that are a little bit more extreme uh, both ways for 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 uh, for conditions. I, I have mixed feelings on this and here's why I played in an era where we had those extremes where clay was like playing on mud and when you played on the grass you couldn't even bounce the ball the way you normally would. It was so, it was so slow uh, so low bouncing and so fast. So I had to completely adjust my game a couple different times of the year as did everyone else. And what I will tell you is that I've probably never enjoyed watching tennis more in the last 15 years because I've been able to watch longer rallies. I can't tell you how boring it was to, to be involved in, in extremely fast conditions. And maybe we just weren't good enough like the players are these days to, to make those conditions look as good as they do these days in Turin, for example. Those are very quick courts and they're playing long rallies like Medvedev and Rublev. But I, I would say that, that tennis has been unbelievably lucky in the last 15 to 20 years that the players have been so consistent and we've had all these rivalries. And I think a big part of that is because they've been able to play the same type of tennis wherever they go. Maybe that would have happened anyway. Maybe they're good enough to do that. I don't know. But one thing I can tell you is that has been enjoyable for me. One thing that I think is worth considering, Andy, however, is consistency of the tennis ball from a health and safety standpoint from the athletes changing tennis balls all the time to different uh, different weights of, of the ball and, and just to sort of different pressure is not ideal on the players. And, and I think there could be some more consistency in here, but it would require some sacrifices financially from the players to make these tournaments whole for the money they're getting paid by these sponsors. Was that an issue for you, Andy? Different tennis balls at each event? Yeah, there's no question. Uh, you know, you would, for, for example, you play a different ball in Montreal and Cincinnati, get used to it, and then you'd have to spend the next week switching balls and it affects your elbow in a different way. Uh, one thing I do want to say with, with uh, the last 15 years, we act like surface has been the thing that's the biggest change in tennis has been the strings. Right. And it's been an insurance policy for people taking big swings. And we're seeing kind of the first generation of people who train from seven, eight years old with these more forgiving strings. I would have, you know, Jim's kind of selling himself short with maybe maybe he wouldn't have been able to adjust. You give Jim more time and be able to take bigger swings on that forehand side. He would have been a nightmare for a lot of people. So I, I listen, I get that the, the, the French Open is muddier. I like that Wimbledon isn't what it was. But listen, I always think an indoor court should act like an indoor court. I hate seeing, you know, you go watch some indoor courts on TV and it's slow, dead, low bouncing. I want to see it kind of benefit a certain skill set, much like the clay court season that for two months leading into Roland Garros does. But the strings have completely changed the game. Also, you're not seeing people serve through the court uh, quite as much. People are just much better returners than they were at the beginning of my career uh, 20 years ago. There were a couple of guys who could take full swings and returns. Now it's kind of everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that makes our sport so special is the different surfaces, whether you're switching from hard court to clay and then to grass, and, and that they should play a little bit different because, heck, they are different. So if somebody's great on one surface, maybe they're not as great on the other. I like that aspect to it. Taylor Fritz, one of the Americans, chiming in on this conversation as well, and he said, quote, with slower, softer tennis balls, there's never a reward for taking a chance on an aggressive shot. And this is a guy who's got a big forehand and a big serve, Jim. Well, the balls must be pretty light <laughs> in Torino <laughs> because right. he was <clears throat> pounding them against Nadal at his win the other day. So, look, a lot of this also, when we, especially when players are talking on social media, you can get there. There's some emotion in it, and obviously there's some myopia. They're looking at it from their own lens. What's good for me? 
Andy Murray wants faster surfaces. That's a big surprise. Of course you do, Andy. You're better on faster surfaces. I want more slower surfaces back in my day. That's the nature of the beast. But it's a good debate. I'm glad we're having it. I don't know that there's a right answer, but for me, the one thing that if, if I was king for a day, I would just bring uh, a little more synergy to the, the type of tennis ball at, at Wimbledon on, on the grass, we're going to play one ball for the whole grass season. Mm. On the clay, one mm -hmm. ball, period. Yes. Uh, in Australia, one ball. You know, let, let's at least make some sense of the seasons that we have with the tennis ball. If Jim were king for a day, that, that would be a wonderful thing. E either way, Andy, uh, <laughs> when you take a look at this whole, whole scenario, what, what would be your dream situation? Well, listen, it's the same It's the same thing we've been dealing with in tennis for a long time, right? Different factions who have different control over different tournaments choose the money, and it doesn't always lead to consistency uh, across the schedule. That's why there is a difference in balls with, uh, you know, different balls, but on similar surfaces for an entire season. So I think Jim is spot on, but there is a kind of a macro issue that leads to this kind of watered-down effect of having and adjusting every week to a different ball. And frankly, it's, it's bad because all it does is, is is wear out the health of, uh, of a lot of the players from having to adjust and readjust. If we took the long view and actually invested in the players, you know, health for the, the, the kind of the long term of their career, we would we would get serious about this conversation. Is this an issue for amateurs at all, by the way, if, if different ball or is this just a professional players? You can really tell the difference. I, it might be. But yeah. I think the torque that the professionals yeah. put on their arms is significant. And I think it's worth looking into. The last thing I will say on this is if the players got together and and really wanted to affect change with, with that tennis ball, they would just have to give up money. It's that simple. It's in their control. You can't expect the tournaments to not sell that sponsorship, but it, you can go to them and say you're getting $5 million for that. We will give up $5 million of prize money over the course of these 10 tournaments to make you whole on that so we can uh, avoid injury. So it's there. It's it's real and the chances of that happening, Andy, are? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, the Carlos Alcaraz. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. I guess we are where we are. Sorry, Andy Murray.